We've heard from several partners today. Now let's hear from another customer. We'll see how Bloom AG unites GitLab pipelines and Terraform for a single source of configurations. You know, configuration is important for consistency, security, and speed, but it can be a pain to manage across multiple tools. So Philip Westphalen with Bloom had the idea to combine configuration efforts of GitLab and Terraform into one place. They automated everything and used a tops-down approach to standardize projects. This innovative idea may not be for you, but it's interesting to see the out-of-the-box thinking. Maybe it will spark others to innovate like Philip did, or to engage with GitLab on new ideas that we can incorporate. Remember, you can chat questions at any time throughout the presentation. Welcome everyone. Uh, today, I share you our way, how we manage our GitLab projects and uh, cloud infrastructure with Terraform. My name is Philip Westphalen. I am a GitLab hero and hosting the GitLab Meetup here in Hamburg. Part of that, <laughs> I'm a software engineer um, and work for an online shop uh, which sells flowers. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the chat or hit me up on Twitter. So let's start with our background story. We recently started to rebuild our um, online shop and the technical landscape behind it um, because we want more speed and start um, for, uh, new or start into the public cloud era. So we need for that infrastructure as code because we don't want to figure out um, everything manually and yeah manual steps are really dangerous there and yes so we also want to automate everything possible so what is the idea we have um, we want to configure our infrastructure in one place. This means in a, a central space anywhere in GitLab or in our GitLab, in a GitLab project, in a repository. So, and we thought about that we don't only configure our cloud infrastructure um, there, we also wanted to create um, or manage our GitLab organization. For example, who is in which team or um, what are the dependent um, information for this specific project as a variable, for example, service accounts or the manage of service accounts. Yes. So um, a part of that, we want to have that our teams have their own space in the infrastructure so, so they don't have to configure in the one repository. And yeah, so this means um, that our teams are still have the chance to be flexible um, so they can fulfill their needs. Yes, and one important thing every time is this that we automate everything. So what does it mean uh, for our structure, how we, how, how we use GitLab and, and, and the cloud? So we had an organization structure like in every other company. We had a um, top level, which is our department or the general configuration, for example. And then we have our teams. We have multiple teams. And then each team have can have multiple services. So, and we thought about how we can use or how we can utilize um, GitLab for that. GitLab got um, groups, subgroups, and repositories. So, in a group can be a subgroup or a repository, and um, a subgroup functions same as a group. <laughs> yeah. So we thought. Okay, we have a group um, for the organization, where's uh, one project, for example, for the general structure. And then 
un under the group, we have subgroups with for each team. And each team can have multiple uh, repositories, which means these are the specific configuration for the um, for the um, services. And then we have um, the Google Cloud Platform world on the other hand. And there are folders. Folders are, yeah, the equivalent or, or the equal thing like a group in GitLab. And under a folder can be a folder <laughs> and uh, a project or a project. And a project is the same like a repository for us. Or, yeah, there, there can be a project where is the, what you need, the, the, yeah, we are connecting the dots there, which service you need and connecting everything and that you can run your software there. Yes. So we built our organization or our organization is a, a folder. Um, but we have for each team a single project um, for every environment. So a dev environment and a prod environment. But this, this is not uh, interesting here. <laughs> um, and yes, and this, this project is for one team. So every service we want to publish there, uh, they are using this project so it's there there are no uh, next level for for a folder or something yes each team has a project there's a kubernetes cluster for example it's perfect so what does it mean for affecting things we had thought about um, or i mentioned before on the organization level we have a little project where we have the general configuration for infrastructure. And then in the team, we also have uh, a project for the team specific configuration. And each service still has another configuration space for the specific service. So it's like the hierarchy. So we have an organization level, we have a team level and a service level. And each level benefits from the um, service above. So the organization hierarchy has data which are inherent to the teams, for the team, 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 team groups in GitLab, for example. Um, so we used um, um, or we shared data from top to down. Yes, so we did that automatically, <laughs> um, which means on the other hand that we don't have a configuration from a lower level that are, can be um, lift upwards. Yeah, because it's, it's technically complicated and you had have could have side effects that you can don't deploy a team or create a new team when you rely in or yeah if you have changes and rely on the dependent service which is not created or they can do a lot of bad things uh, when you don't use top-down approach or a straightforward uh, approach um, Yes. So how we share data across the landscape. We have two different approaches. Uh, one is a GitLab CI variables approach. This um, is done when we uh, have to share data between um, different levels. So when we are on the organization level, and want to share uh, something to the teams, like a service account in the Google, um, we do it over GitLab CI variables. Um, yeah. So we uh, can use it everywhere downside there. And 
have a clear cut between one project and the other project. So it does not affect when something change on the other side, only if we, we rename the key of the variable. And on the other hand, we have Terraform outputs. This is um, when you have multiple uh, Terraform um, scripts and you um, uses the same state. So when you have multiple jobs, for example, and they are sh yeah, and they really uh, rely on data from a previous pipeline job, for example. And then we use Terraform outputs because it's um, normally sharing the same state and we just configure yeah, um, a bridge between the, these two. Um, yes. And what does it mean when we use the data uh, for um, uh, the GitLab CI variables? It's really simple. Um, we simply, uh, um, Terraform has the ability to use directly environment variables from the, the host system um, when it's using the correct name naming convention there. So we don't have to do anything. And when we have Terraform outputs, um, we have a data pack there where we have to configure, okay, we are importing from another Terraform state. So this is a, a brain or the, yeah, the brain of Terraform where every, any information is stored. Um, yes, it's configured there. And you simply ask them in the Terraform way, um, They ask in the Terraform way um, for the for the data, and you can use it more easily. Um, an advantage of the Terraform outputs way is that we can use, or we have to configure one data lake or data source, and we have a lot of different or everything, which is an output from the previous job. And um, on the other hand, the disadvantage of GitLab CI, we had to configure every single data source or data information as a single GitLab variable. Yes. So, so how does it look in practice? Um, we have a hard, or, or we have a hard for our configuration. So it's simply a single uh, repository which prepares our cloud project. So in the GCP and configure our GitLab or uh, GitLab projects or groups with permissions. So if you see here on the left side, we have a Teams JSON file where we store a lot of configuration for our different teams. Um, and yes, and the, the, the configuration hard um, or the single project configuring uh, all the base stuff which is needed for the organization, the world organization, and creating uh, specific service accounts uh, for for each team project and creating the project in the GCP. Yes, and yeah, they they print a lot of. Um, GitLabCI variables because they are all shared for each team and then uh, for each environment, for example. Yes. So we have a single point for the world organization and then we come to our team. Our team has also a project named here the project administration. And there we manage our general stuff for the team, like creating a Kafka um, or specific service accounts for each of our services. And yeah, they are doing their team internal stuff. And this project, for example, plays um, also GitLab variables uh, for the specific service, 
but not in the service or in the repository directly. Um, yes, um, they are posting the variables di uh, in the in the group because a par um, because we don't want to place um, this in directly into a project because we had to go in the project and have to change or it's a lot of uh, big or, or it's big management to say okay we need this project and the variables there there etc etc it's easier when you put it in the um, yeah in the group but how does it feel to use the service or how does it look um in the service he's mostly well, he's only consuming the variables and um, building the stuff needed for the software in the cloud yes and this means here there are a lot of or the, yeah, there are a lot of different variables and this is only a small part of that because um, the variables are inherited from the group and then from the, uh, from the from the organization group and then from the team group yeah this is a lot and it's sometimes hard to figure out is the very well, yeah is the very there or not yes um but um we when we start with the service uh we have a template way and then we typing only the service name in and then we don't have to do anything more uh, because the CI jobs automatically pick the correct variables from themselves. So um, another interesting question is uh, where you have to store the Terraform state. Of course you can, could easily use um, the Terraform state in GitLab, um, which is really great. But we thought, what if, yeah, yeah, um, we thought it would be fun uh, when you store it where you need it. For example, if you configure GitLab pipe, uh, GitLab variables, we start in. GitLab, and when we use um, Terraform to create our uh, cloud infrastructure, we start in the cloud. But why? Um, when anything happens in the cloud or is destroyed, it's only done in the cloud. And when we um, configure our GitLab stuff, uh, it doesn't affect the configuration we did for, or t Terraform configuration we did for um, GitLab. So it's not so combined. Yes. And what other specifics we face in daily doing with our pipelines or how the pipelines look. This is a screenshot from our project administration. This is a team internal um, setup and there we, we found out that it's smart or it's a good way to do things um, in a line that then or yeah some configuration in terraform depends on other configuration or it's possible that this um, depends on other configuration so that means uh, a job has to be run or a job uh, could only run afterwards. Um, and this is because, for example, when you're on the Google Cloud, some APIs take some time to activate, but sometimes Terraform is not working correctly and waiting until the API is uh, finished. So you got an error, okay, the API was not ready. Um, and this is not so cool, but we are facing this issue by running each thing in a separate job. 
And for example, when it comes to the Terraform state, it's better when we can um, have a different job for, uh, for, 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 for Google Cloud jobs uh, um, or ter Terraform expressions and GitLab expressions. Yes. And another, and another interesting thing is that we had split our environments into different two different jobs. And for us, it makes sense because we don't want to build a logic into um, Terraform where we have to loop our two other, uh, our two um, configuration or environments. So we just said, okay, we have a variable for the, uh, the, the environment we are currently building and this is set by the GitLab CI job. Yeah. But in the setup we have, um, the destroying of the infrastructure could be take some time. It's a little bit tricky because you have to start in the end to destroy everything. Um, this is a little bit complicated. Yes. And we uh, used the template thing for our jobs because we have the two, the logic that we have for each environment, a different job. And we are, yeah, we're facing it uh, really simple. So um, we have a Dean or a base job where are the common things are stored like rules and image and the common script. And then we have our jobs for the specific environment, like for the dev environment. And this is extending simply the uh, base template um, and set the correct variables. For example, the, the dev environment here, for example, is a, a correct exp um, uh, naming pattern for setting using environment variables for Terraform. Uh, yes. And then we have here um, an interesting thing. Um, we say we have a state bucket or we have a variable, but in the end, we have a variable specific for, for, for the dev stage. But um, the GitLab, um, but the Terraform, does not know it, or doesn't know it, um, that it's a specific variable only for dev. Yeah, so we have this complexity, complexity, complexity in, in Terraform. So yes, and we have a special step for the um, Google application credentials. Yeah. So. What did I say in the last 25 minutes? <laughs> so a little bit uh, wrap up. So um, the key things you have to take uh, take with you are that you have to, that this is really cool and helpful to automate your infrastructure and go the extra step and use it not only for the infrastructure um, but on, um, but additionally also for um, example, your, your, your building tool or something. And yeah, um, maybe try to map your organization structure into your cloud and GitLab setup. This was really helpful for us and worked really well, work really well at our company. And yeah, and a little tip, it's not so important, but you can still save the Terraform state where um, where where you use it. So in GitLab, when you use it for GitLab, and Google when you're using for the Google com uh, configuration. And in the end, don't forget the flexibility uh, the flexibility for the teams or in general. Yes. And 
in the end. Um, if you want to connect with me, uh, there are my socials. And if you are interested in further talks, uh, join our GitLab meetup group. We are also doing uh, virtual meetups. So I uh, have to thank you for your attention. And it would be really cool uh, if you sh share some insights, how you use it, Terraform, and how do you think about our story. Yes. Have a good night or a good day or a good morning. Bye-bye.